three of us. Indeed. Full house. Full house, yeah. Yeah. Celebrities shutting down disrespectful interviewers. Interesting. I do like this. I think they get a bit uppity sometimes, celebrities, yeah. but yeah, sometimes mm-hmm. probably the interviewers probably deserve it, I think, sometimes as well. They kind think... of ask some stupid questions, they do. can't they? That's what I was just oh, going to say. You yeah. think sometimes when you see, like, uh, you get one chance to ask someone in, in an interview a question, yeah. and you think, and that's what you've asked. Yeah. We've got to think as well, the actors, they do media days, so they do full days, like yeah. eight, ten hour days of mm. just being interviewed. Mm. Oh, yeah, they can do yeah. worldwide as well, can't they? Especially yeah. for new films coming out and stuff like that. So. You're, you're eight hours in and someone asks you a stupid question. Mm. That's like if if like in whatever work, if you're eight hours into a job and someone just asks you a stupid question, you go, "What are you on about?" I think sometimes <laughs> they ask questions that maybe they shouldn't ask. You yeah, as well. absolutely. Maybe something that's push, off, push, push yeah. a button. Yeah, yeah. push yeah. the button. There's something that should yeah. be off the record. Yeah. Something that they don't that they know that they don't want to talk about, but they still I ask in, it. I interviewed mm, yeah. a quite famous celebrity once. Um, oh yeah. Sponsored him at work, and um, he come down to do a Q and A, and uh, we got all like all our customers down and all that sort yeah. of thing, and did a, did a night of it, and uh, they give me a list of things I wasn't allowed to ask. And one of them was one of them was a very famous incident. You, you know, it's Andrew Flintoff, and it's uh, yeah, the uh, famous yeah, incident yeah, yeah. was the pedlo. Oh wow! Yeah. So when he turned up, I went, "Why can't I ask about the pedlo?" He went, "Who said that?" I said, "That's what you, your secretary or whatever it was yeah. said can't ask." He went, "Ask me whatever you want." Not asked. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Freddie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this is a celebrity shutting down disrespectful interviewers. Let's go. Yeah. Sometimes celebrities just have to put rude interviewers in their place, like when Matthew McConaughey had a tense face-off with Joy Behar after she interrupted him just to insult his close personal friend, tennis champion Novak Djokovic. I was happy to be in his box. I got to sit behind his parents, which was really awesome to see them when he brings them Isn't up and where they started. Isn't he an anti-vaxxer? I believe, I'm anti-vaxxer. I believe so, yeah. Just so you know. Things only got worse when McConaughey's political aspirations came up, with Behar nearly derailing the actor's campaign before... I'm just going to say, Matthew McConaughey's got to be one of the coolest men on the planet. So, hey. I didn't realise he was getting into politics. He'd no, sweep that. Yeah, he just, like, so just cool. the way he talks, the way he looks, everything about it, just so, he's just super cool. He yeah, is, actually, yeah, 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 to be fair. Before it even began. Do you think he could get elected in Texas being anti-gun? Do I think I could get elected in Texas being anti-gun? One thing about if, if, if me and politics is to give you a direct statement right there is yeah. be playing a game that I'm not interested in playing. Okay, to don't, give you don't a direct do it. statement don't right there. <laughs> Well, From but, that moment, uh, McConaughey's aggravation <laughs> became yeah. unmistakable, much like Tom Cruise's reaction when an interviewer posed intrusive questions about his then recent divorce from actress Nicole Kidman. Was Nicole the love of your life? What do you What do you mean, Peter? You were married for ten years. I, listen, we raised children. I. After failing to read the room, the interviewer continued with yet another prying question, prompting Cruz to decisively shut him down. And do you have a relationship where you, you talk, it's a parenting relationship, you know, and talk professionally about each other's why don't we? Why don't, listen, here's the, here's the thing, Peter. Yeah. You're stepping over a line now. You're stepping over a line. You know you are. Well, I suppose they're questions Peter, though, that people want to know. Peter, you want to know. Take and responsibility for what you want to know. Don't say what other people. This is a conversation that I'm having with you right you're now. You're right. Okay. So I'm just telling you right now. Okay. Just put your manners back in. Nevertheless, that's going to go well now. And it going forward. Greater <laughs> public humiliation than actress Lindsay Lohan, who was openly mocked about her personal and legal troubles during this widely criticized interview with David Letterman. Aren't you supposed to be in rehab now? <laughs> wow. How long have you been in rehab? Uh, three months. How many times have you been in rehab? Several. And what, what, how will this time be different? What are they rehabbing, first of all? What, what is on their list? What, what are they going to work on when you walk through the door? We didn't discuss in the, this in the pre-interview. No. The actress appeared on the show to promote her upcoming movie, but found herself desperately trying to steer the interview back on track as Letterman persistently made cruel jokes at her expense. You have to be in rehab May 2nd. Are you going to be there? You'll be there, right? Who's taking you to rehab? You don't want to talk about that either, right? <laughs> oh god. When you go to the rehab, what are they well, doing? Let's, let's, this is, we have to, we're here like, for a God. Yeah. We have to what? Let's stay on the positive. Oh, what, like, trying... aside from that side of the positive. Yeah. 
All right, come no. on now. Things got so bad that Lohan was actually on the verge of tears, with her voice noticeably shaking as she struggled to maintain her composure. No, but I don't want people to think that I'm making a joke of that. No, you shouldn't make a joke of because this could be good for you. It will be good for you. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Have you been to this no, place? No, it's not like a joking matter. <laughs> no. But the bullying doesn't stop there, <laughs> yeah. as actor Jonah Hill has faced numerous jokes about his weight in various interviews over the years. Jonah, do you think it's important to be unattractive to be funny? <laughs> Can skinny people be funny? What the f man? You know, uh, I, I, I don't understand. Can you just ask a normal question? Are you the fat guy in Hollywood still, or? Or is everybody like look at you and they're like, oh wow, you know, this is great, now you're healthy. Uh, do you have any other questions that are smart? First of all, you smell good, smell. which is surprising. <laughs> Why is that surprising? I don't know, I just wouldn't think of a, you, a guy who would have a nice scent on. And it That's seems such a, good. like... I'm gonna really work hard to not take that as a shot. You know what I mean? Similarly, Mad Men's Christina Hendricks hates it when interviewers make comments about her body, with the actress once even shutting down an interview over such a remark. You have been an inspiration as a full-figured woman. What is the most inspiring story that you can remember where you've inspired someone? <laughs> um... Uh, I don't... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've gotten... I'm sorry. Despite the awkward moment, the host would make yet another attempt to discuss the actress's figure. However, this time, Hendrix firmly puts her in her place. You've been known as a, an inspiration for women, as being a full figure. What is the most... I mean, it just said, you just said it again. It's just, it's just sort of... But when it comes to shutting down inappropriate questions, perhaps no one does it better than Tom Hardy, whose 2015 exchange with an intrusive reporter spread like wildfire online. Um, your own sexuality seems a bit more ambiguous. Do you find a hard... Tom, Tom Hardy's the sort of guy that would fight you, I think. Oh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Look at he's looking. I, I, like, he's okay, looking now. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, yeah. I think he's the sort of guy that would come yeah. up we're, we're going. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you think he would, would yeah. you? For celebrities to talk to, their sex to, talk to media about their sexuality, what on earth are you on about? <laughs> Despite his visible agitation, Hardy kept his cool, with many commending the actor for the way he assertively set boundaries around his personal life. But what is your question? I was wondering if you find it difficult for celebrities to talk about their sexuality. I don't find it difficult for celebrities to talk about their sexuality. Um, are you asking me about my sexuality? Um, sure. <laughs> Why? Why? Um, thank you. Okay. But if you thought that <laughs> clip was... Well, that's exactly what I was getting at before. You've got all... You're interviewing one of the best actors in Hollywood. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's your question you that's come up with. That's your shot. Yeah. That's basically, one, one, basically, one shot. basically, he was trying to say to him, oh, yeah. you're gay or yeah. something. You yeah, could have come yeah, out. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But it's, it's absolutely nothing to do with no, the job that he's doing or anything, is it? No. Absolutely zero. No. No. <laughs> nothing to do with it. And you can tell by the, the, the guy's voice he wanted to get onto that subject. Mm. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. Not, by the way. Yeah, he, he knew he wanted to get onto that subject. He wanted to say it without saying it. So he's pretty much saying, why don't you just ask the question that you ought to ask? You know. Cringe inducing. Just wait until you see how Hardy handled another disrespectful interviewer in this next painfully awkward awkward segment. I have a question for Tom Hardy. Tom, I'll preface my remarks by saying that I have five sisters, a wife, a daughter, and a mother, so I know what it's like to be uh, out, outgunned by estrogen. But I just wanted to ask you, as you were reading the script, did you ever think, why are all these women in here? I thought this was supposed to be a man's movie. <laughs> That's a crazy <laughs> question. <laughs> Not for one minute. <laughs> it's, that's kind of obvious. Hardy's co-star in The Dark Knight Rises, Anne Hathaway, would also have to silence a rude reporter <laughs> who appeared to have an unusual fixation on her physical fitness. You are in phenomenal shape. Thank you. You're, you're very... You, well, you, well, you're always in great shape, but you had to make sure you were in perfect shape for this one, didn't you? It wasn't about being in perfect shape, it was about being able to do the stunts and the fighting perfectly. As the interviewer persisted in questioning Hathaway about her physique, she grew increasingly frustrated. Is, is there a certain regimen you put yourself through in terms of the diet, the workout? What, what is the feline fitness regime? <laughs> Um, a lot, it's, it's, it's all the boring stuff that no one ever wants to do. It's just watch what you eat and get yourself to the gym. 
any particular workout? Are you trying to lose weight? Well, <laughs> what's, what's the deal, man? You look great. No, no, no. I, no, no, seriously. That, we well, have to talk you. about this. What What do you want? Are you trying to fit into a cat suit? Yet it would be the notoriously <laughs> hot-tempered chef, Gordon Ramsay, who would unleash his wrath on a gotcha journalist, attempting to ambush him with photos of an allegedly unsatisfactory steak served at one of Ramsay's restaurants. Um, it's really weird for you to give me a piece of paper and when you say, am I satisfied that it's a good state, you have to be a little bit more honest with me on that one. What are you trying to get at? Ramsey confronted the reporter for the underhanded tactic and expertly explained why ordering a steak well done is just plain wrong. But you asked the, you asked the steak to be cooked well done. And is that a well done steak? Oh, come on. What is this? I mean, where, where, can, can you, I mean, keep on rolling. But for legal reasons, this is absolutely crucial. But how sad is this, that you ask for a steak to be cooked well done, okay? Now, whatever quality of beef it is, it's gone past any form of taste when you've cooked it well done. So you present me with a picture, God bless you, and you say, is that right? I don't eat steak well done. That's your prerogative because you're the customer. But unfortunately, you're never going to identify the quality of a beef when the steak is well cooked. So. I'm really sorry to piss on your bonfire, but it's a bit of a stupid question. <laughs> Thank you. Can I give you a paper back? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you very much. I thought it was an intelligent interview. Things got highly oh, personal well. <laughs> in this next interview when actor Michael B. Jordan recognized a reporter who just so happened to be a former classmate who had bullied him before he rose to fame. And you know, we know each other. We go way back all the way to Chad Science in Newark, okay? What a corny kid, right? <laughs> no, I did not say that, misquoted for sure. So you did not hear me say, I said we used to make fun of the name, but yeah, he is obviously killing things out here. The situation somehow got even more awkward when Jordan's Creed Three co-star Jonathan Major showed up, with the interviewer quickly making him uncomfortable. Isn't this the sexiest man uh, show off right here? Who's the sexiest man? Because now let's... Kind of Speaking of bullies, <laughs> recent years have seen numerous reports about El. She's moved to the UK, hasn't she? I, I heard she's trying to make a comeback. Coxwell. Who? Ellen. Oh, she. Ellen DeGeneres, yeah. Oh, I didn't, never knew that. A lot of people claiming Chuck that Hansen, she's fled in, fled in justice uh, <clears throat> with the connections with uh, P. Diddy and. Uh, <laughs> really? Oh, really? Oh, and wow. Jeffrey Epstein, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm, yeah, so I've not heard there. anything about that. Yeah, she's moved to the Cotswolds. What's wrong? Oh. Yeah. Ellen DeGeneres' Weird, alleged toxic behavior backstage, which makes this clip of actress Dakota Johnson putting her in her place all the more satisfying. You turned 30. I did. And um, how was the party? I wasn't invited. <laughs> Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited. Last year, no, last time I was on the show, last year, you gave me a bunch of shit about not inviting you, but I didn't even know you wanted to be invited. Well, who doesn't I didn't want to be invited to a party? Well, I didn't even know you liked me. <laughs> <laughs> of course I like you. You knew I liked you. You've been on the show many times, and, and don't I show like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I did invite you, and you didn't come, so. This time you invited me? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. How do you know? I don't think so. Ask everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Johnson humiliated DeGeneres like no one has before, sparking media speculation about the true nature of their relationship due to the tense exchange. Um, and then, but Tig Notaro performed at your party? She did. She did a set? She did. It was a surprise. What did she do? A bunch of funny stuff. She's hilarious. <laughs> She's my favorite comedian. Yeah. <laughs> this next clip is undoubtedly the most bizarre, as Jim Carrey would completely shut down a reporter no attempting to interview <laughs> with him at New York Fashion Week 2017, with the actor launching into a rant that has since become infamous. There's no meaning to any of this, so I, uh, I wanted to find the most meaningless thing that I could f come to and join, and, uh, and, uh, and here I am. They're I mean, you gotta admit, it's completely meaningless. Although the reporter <laughs> tried to provide context for the event to carry, he would scoff at her explanation, expressing his disbelief in fashion icons or in anything else for that matter. Well, they say they're celebrating icons inside. Celebrating icons. icons. Boy, that is just the absolute lowest aiming, you know, possibility that we could come up with. It's like icons. What do you, do you believe in icons? I don't I believe in personalities. I don't believe that you exist. I don't believe in icons. Uh, I don't believe in personalities. I believe that peace 
lies beyond personality, beyond invention and disguise, beyond the red S that you wear on your chest that makes bullets bounce off. I believe that it's deeper than that. I believe we're a full manager dancing yourself. She's thinking, what am I doing? I don't care. Carry. In the, in the words of Tom Hardy, what you want about? Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. Long, yeah. He later explained that his erratic behavior stemmed from an existential crisis he experienced that year, during which he grappled with his sense of identity. Who did? There is no me. There's no you. No. We're not here. This is a dream. There's just things happening. And there are clusters of tetrahedrons moving around together. Okay. Yeah. So what's happening in our world right now? Because there is a lot of news that actually is relevant that's not that yeah. Here's uplifting. Here's the thing. It's not our world. None That's of this is key. real? Nope. nope. So you're just passing We don't through. matter. We don't matter. Oh, wow. There's the good news. Okay. In this next painful clip, <laughs> you'll see a reporter attempting to flirt with actress Megan Fox, only for her to uncomfortably shut it down. I don't know if there's every, I, I don't know if there's a man alive who's not in love with you in some way. You're so silly. You know what I'm, I'm am I really? You're a silly No, man. I'm not silly, You're a silly at silly all. You're a silly man in a checkered shirt. I am not. Wow. <laughs> this interview has not aged well, as Fox has since openly addressed her experiences with objectification in Hollywood. You know, I think you're flirting with me. I'm kidding. Whoa. Oh, dude. And speaking of interviews <laughs> that aged poorly, back in 2009, host Matt Lauer faced significant backlash for inappropriate comments he made towards Sandra Bullock regarding a scene in her film, The Proposal, in which she appeared nude. The major thing that's okay. changed since you were here last? Yes. I have now seen you naked. <laughs> and I'm so sorry about that. I have seen you naked. Were you able to sleep afterwards? I was, you know. Why are you looking down? This was later followed by <laughs> allegations of sexual misconduct conduct oh, against Matt Lauer in 2017, <laughs> leading to his unceremonious dismissal from NBC News. I watched it last night. It is a lot of fun. Did Thank I mention you. you have a nude scene in this it's movie? Pretty much from the time you opened from your mouth. Time? Yeah. Sandra yeah. Bullock, come back more often. No, not after this interview. <laughs> now, when it comes to interviews, Brilliant. actor Joaquin Phoenix is notoriously hesitant to engage with the press, often displaying his frustration with repetitive questions throughout his media tour for the 2019 film Joker. The movie obviously is about the Joker, but it goes beyond that. It's really about um, the, the mental state he was in. Can you tell me a little bit about what research or what kind of, uh, what you did to prepare for this? Because this was really an intense performance. Um, what was kind of the process of getting into that mindset? It's a Isn't this old news? Isn't this old news? Didn't I, didn't I, I feel like I've talked about this for six months. Phoenix initially dismissed the question as old news before eventually offering a sarcasm-fueled response. And thank you so much for asking that question. Um, my publicist is telling me I just need to get need to go home. And speaking of bad questions, director Quentin Tarantino once flipped out on a reporter who asked him if he believed movies had the potential to incite real-world violence. But why are you so sure that there's no link? between like enjoying guy. movie violence yeah. and enjoying real violence. I don't, I, well, I'm going to tell you why I'm so sure. Don't, don't ask me a question like that. I'm not going to, I'm not biting. I refuse Good. your question. Why? Because I refuse your question. I'm not your slave and you're not my master. Can you I can't just, make me dance to your tune. I, I I'm, not, ever, I'm not a monkey. I I'm can't not, make you answer anything. I'm just, and, I'm well, asking and, you interesting and, questions. And I'm saying, and I'm saying I refuse. Okay, well, no, I was just asking you why. That's fine. After his, didn't he get binned off? I think he did, uh, didn't he? I think he had something to do with Princess Diana. Really? Uh, no, like uh, uh, something to do with an interview with Princess Diana uh, or something like that. What he handled it? Really I'm not sure then? if it was in. That's Martin Bashir, wasn't it? Is that not him? No. Well, he's... I don't think so. Looks like him. Just like, yeah, so yeah, uh, he had another clip with was it Robert Downey Jr. I think. Explosive exchange with Tarantino. One might assume that interviewer Krishnan Guru Murthy had that's learned it. his Krishnan, lesson. Yeah, However, yeah. he later found himself oh, in a heated go. confrontation with actor Robert Downey Jr. by ambushing him with an unexpected question about his political views. What I'd really like to I'd really like to ask you about a quote you gave to the New York Times. Um, and I don't, I don't want to pry, so if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. But what you said to the New York Times once was it was about. It was after your incarceration, and you said you can't go from a two thousand dollar a night hotel suite to a penitentiary and understand it and come out a liberal. D does that mean you're you're not a liberal, or that you came out of prison not being liberal? Um, 
are we promoting a movie? Despite RDJ's <laughs> efforts to remain diplomatic, his blood boiled when Krishnan started delving into his personal life, leading to an unforgettable response. You've talked in other interviews again about um, your relationship with your father and the role of all of that in uh, you know, the dark periods you entered and, and taking drugs and drinking and all of that. And I just wondered whether you know, you, you, you think you're free of all of that or whether that's still something... I'm sorry, I, I really don't. Uh, uh, what are we doing? I, I, well, I'm just asking questions, that's all. Right. Okay, that's okay. Bye. Thank you. I'm sorry. Let's take your mic. Okay. It's okay. Yeah, you're right. Typical BBC style report, isn't it? Oh, yeah. hello. Okay, it's just getting a little dinosaur in your. No, 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 look, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Thank you. Robert Downey Jr. would later blast Krishnan, labeling him as a bottom feeder and stating, we're promoting Avengers. A lot of kids are going to see it. This has nothing to do with your creepy, dark agenda that I'm feeling like all of a sudden ashamed and obligated to accommodate your weirdo <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's got a point, aren't you? You're asking it's questions. Like Sometimes, you, celebrities you know. just have to... And they're clearly there to promote something, you know, promote film yeah. access about Avengers. I mean, you've got to be you know, giving more upbeat questions really, haven't you? you He's know, trying to get a snippet that'll make him be like, oh, I got... Yeah, I got of course. Something yeah, yeah. happened with that Krishnan Guru Murthy? Something happened with I'm him, I'm not sure. It, yeah, no, it sort of rings a bell slightly. Yeah. I'm not what sure what it was. For, I think. I it thought was BBC, it was. BBC, wasn't it, originally? What did go over? Possibly, I yeah. Was, I think uh, I remember it from the BBC. I'd have to look into that mm -hmm. again, because I've not seen for years yeah, now. Yeah, same, uh, same. But I think I've got a feeling something happened as well, but I'm not sure what. Yeah, it's... some reason, I think it got binned off some... But like, I might be getting mixed up with the Princess Diana yeah. thing. But asking uh, questions like that, you probably no, would get binned off. Because I mean, yeah. questions like that, when you're trying to yeah. promote a, an Avengers yeah. film, yeah. above all, above all things, because kids watching just, it. You know, I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, he's absolutely right. Robert Downey Jr. There, you know, is a lot of kids would be watching yeah. it, watching mm -hmm. a film and watching an interview and things yeah. like that. So you don't ask that questions like that, no. do you? Well, well he's, 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 he's done loads of interviews anyway about that part of his past anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's a different type of interview. He's not there. He's not there to talk about that. It's if you go on to like a proper talk show, isn't it, with a serious interview? That's when you sort of agree before and yeah, I'll talk about these types things mm. but you know that should be like a light-hearted thing about the film and stuff yeah. and, yeah. and that's it so i absolutely yeah. agree with that yeah mm. anyway. Some no, good ones on there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Some of them yeah. just don't care. Do like Tarantino again. Yeah, Tarantino is another one of them. No, I love Tarantino. But people yeah, don't care, does yeah. it? People <laughs> like Kevin Gordon Ramsay. You just know yeah. they're going to give it back yeah. to them. They it's, don't care, do they? The British they ones, are, British actors are always the most straightforward. Like, just stop talking. Yeah, yeah. About. yeah Tom yeah. Hardy as well. He's yeah, just exactly. Like I say, he looks like he'll probably fight you. Yeah, the judo. The judo champion. Nowadays, he'd be like, you know, let's go. You see the situation yesterday with Roy Keane. I know it's a little bit worse. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see it, no. Oh, have you not seen it? No, no. So it kind of fits into this video. You know, he's, um, he's doing the wrap up on the, on the TV being interviewed yeah. mm. and someone from the crowd yeah. he's shouting loads of shit out to him so he goes over and says me and you in the car park now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll meet you in the car park <laughs> it's like opposite yeah. mouth it's yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. okay you know anyway I hope you guys enjoyed that don't forget like and subscribe we'll see you on the next one cheers, cheers.